Hello guys, it's Rob Moringa here. Sorry about the little awkward start there. Uh, today I'm talking to Claire. Claire, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Uh, well, thanks to you, I'm, I'm very good psychologically. Claire is a, is a very good friend who's let me stay with her in lockdown and that's the reason why we're not social distancing for you snitches out there and why I'm so grateful. So, Claire, what did you study at university? Where did you study? And when did you first realise that your sadness was real depression? Um... I studied zoology at Cardiff, um, Cardiff University, um, so it's like biology but it's very very, it's very much animal orientated. Right. Um, and I guess I kind of realised I had a friend who was living in the same house as me and we were both having the same problems and kind of towards the end of my first year we both realised that a good day should not be a day that you don't cry. Yeah. That should not be a good day, that should be a normal day. <laughs> yes. Uh, all about crying. It's a bit of a mixed blessing, it could be a... Not all day it isn't. <laughs> so all day, every day, you started to think, I need help. Yeah, and I was waking up at three in the morning every morning, no appetite, didn't want to leave the house, stopped going to lectures, lots of things. Right, so so what helped with that? Well, I still did the horses every day. Um, Just clarify what you mean by that, please. So I have two horses. I've got a small Welsh Section A and a riding pony called Timmy. And... I'm very lucky because Tim's can be ridden or not ridden, either way he's happy, but still every day I have to look after them, in the winter I have to go and muck out every day and turn out and bring in and that sort of thing. It's quite brutal. Actually. It's relentless, yeah. And I love it and even at my absolute worst my horses have always been really well taken care of, it's a real point of personal pride. But when I was at uni I was at a yard that um, there wasn't anyone there about seven so I used to go up about, at about seven at night, pitch black. I'd park outside the yard because I couldn't be bothered to unlock all the gates, climb over all the fences, let myself in, unlock things and then do everything there in the dark on my own. <laughs> so what was it about the process of looking after horses that, that helped with depression? Being outside helps and as you know I'm incredibly passionate about my animals, they're pretty much the only thing I care about. Yeah. Um, and I... Even when I was really depressed, I felt very proud that I was looking after them so well. I put a lot of work into looking after my beasts, so... Yeah, okay, so what didn't help? Other than uni in general? Other, other than university in general, yeah. House sharing, that was very bad for me. First year of uni I lived with six people who I didn't know. I ended up being best friends with one of them, but a couple of the others hated me for reasons I don't fully understand, if I'm honest. <laughs> don't think I did anything particularly awful to them, but apparently um, they took against me. Well, hopefully you'd remember it if you did do something yeah. awful. And then second year I lived with my boyfriend at the time, mm -hmm. which is an, another story entirely, and five boys and a girl who disappeared for most of the second year. Third year I did a placement year and I went down to Plymouth and lived with another woman for um, six months. And these all made your depression worse? Yes. Yes, I'm not very good living in house shares. Why? I get very, very insular. I stop. I start avoiding the kitchen because there might be people there. If, if anyone has friends over, I just don't want to be seen. What, do you get too anxious at the thought of it? Yeah, I get really socially awkward. Um, I Obviously, you get depression, you get anxiety to a certain degree, and when my depression's bad, my anxiety is bad as well. So. Okay. And it's often very social-based, so... Okay. So what was the, the worst moment you had, if you don't mind that question? I didn't have a worst moment in particular, mm. but I had quite definite plans of how I would kill myself if I was going to do it, and I was thinking about it a lot. Okay. Which isn't really something you should ever think. Did you, did you write a note or anything? Here comes a dog. Hey, trouble. Uh, no, I didn't write a note. I wasn't at that point yet. I don't know if I ever would be, to be fair. Yeah. Um, I had a friend who killed herself when she was when I was a teenager. Right. And it's so unfair on the people left behind. I don't think I could do that to my parents. Okay. Well, it's good that you. <clears throat> it's very good that you've pulled through, and I'm not just saying that selfishly that you've given me a, a couch to sleep <laughs> in. And, uh, hey, it's in, a sofa bed. In the pandemic. <laughs> so what? Are you, at the darkest times, let's say, or patches, what kept you going? What thought kept you going most? 
Okay. <laughs> it's not my horses or my... Because I didn't have a dog the entire time. It's always my animals that keep me going. They make me leave the house. You can't look after an animal if you don't feed it properly or look after it properly. Depression is hard and you don't want to look after yourself. But I have to look after them. Right. What is a virus? A virus? A virus is debatably alive. It's a small um, parasite, fundamentally, with a line of DNA but no way to produce energy. And how do they travel? Um, infections vary. Oi! Infections Settle vary? Down. Well... <laughs> Camera stand. Depends on the virus, I think. I, I don't know heaps about them, I only like the basics. Yeah. As far as I can tell... But you did study them in higher education? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. A little bit, but higher education's a bit of a blur. Um, they can transfer by bodily fluid, is probably the most common way. Some can be airborne in bodily fluid, but there's generally... It all depends on how long they live for on soft and hard surfaces. So we had strangles at my stables, which is a notifiable disease. Right very infectious. Um, as soon as I heard about it, my horses were staying in the field, I didn't use the water from the yard, I didn't go on the yard, I didn't touch anyone else's horses. Social distancing? Very much so. Isolation. It's incredibly contagious and that is why it's such a Okay. Um, thank you. Has avoiding certain kinds of news in the recent times, this is, was it May 14th? Today? Yeah. Yes, yes. May 14th, um, has avoiding certain kinds of news helped your depression? Throughout life and particularly now? When I'm depressed, I don't have a lot of interest in the wider world. So it doesn't really occur. I'm not a great news watcher anyway. My mum listens to LBC and watches the news channel occasionally. Um, while she has breakfast and stuff and I'm not that person. Right. The most I do is listen to the radio. Yeah. Um, I haven't been listening to a lot of radio because I haven't been commuting recently, but to be honest, I don't want to know a lot of what's going on. Yeah. Aside from the fact there's not a lot of news happening, Yeah. it's also very negative. Like, everything is just... I was talking to my mum about it earlier. It's all so negative all the time. What are the two biggest misconceptions people have about horses? That for they are owned by rich people. <laughs> people who have horses are poor because they have horses. There's a couple that are rich. Yep. Um, I work at a, I work at a country store. I sell hats and body protectors and other riding gear. Yeah. Um, they, the clientele, vary a lot, and the people who have horses vary a lot. So there isn't really a kind of rich aspect to it. Um, Could you say more? You said round here. I thought you were joking at first. But apparently, it's true. There's a horse eating pony. Can you, what do you mean by that? No, 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 it's not <laughs> real. My horse is a wuss and is convinced that there are a lot of things out there that want to eat him. Oh, I see. Basically, he he says, Mum, Mum, that donkey's going to eat me, and I'm sitting there going, No, it's not, could you please walk on? Okay, so you, it was, okay, an exaggerated description of, um, a, yes, of a scared yes. horse. Yes, my, my horse tells me horse. lots of things eat horses. I'm pretty sure he's lying. <laughs> Maybe do a video on um, horses and anxiety one day. <laughs> Um, do you have trouble focusing? Yes, sometimes. Um, I used to really struggle with essays because I can't pin my brain. Mm. I don't know if we've discussed it before, but I've got, um, it's been queried if I have ADHD. Yeah. So when I had one of my breakdowns, we went to see a psychiatrist, psychologist. Yeah. The proper one. And he talked to me for an hour and then suggested things that should be tested and basically... Um, bits that have been done and haven't been done. The conclusion is I'm borderline autistic and I may or may not have ADHD. Mm. Um, I find it quite difficult to sit still without doing something. Yeah, I've, no I've noticed that. Either knitting... Crochet, sewing... Why don't you show people what you've been knitting? Um, Can you reach that? No. Mean, uh, was that in a day or two days? Um, a, a bit. It's not great. <laughs> it's going to be a basket. It's going to be a basket. Like a day's, day's work. That's, that's, that's pretty good. I'm well, sure. Given it's made from an old sheet I found in the back of a cupboard, I think it's going pretty yeah, well. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comments about um, <laughs> Claire's basket. But, okay, you touched on this a little bit. Why do you find social gatherings difficult? Say, ranging from you're going to meet three strangers in a pub with a friend to a party where you don't know anyone. Honestly, those two things are very um, equal to me hmm. in le 
levels of anxiety. I get quite socially awkward, um, I always have done. I don't really understand people that well, I understand animals better. So... Can you explain what you mean by that? What is it about an, an animal that, that... What lack of obstacle does an animal have? Animals don't need you to read between the lines. They are very straightforward. Mm. They're very reactionary as well. Um, so with him, I can see when he is looking at a cat or something, and I know what he's thinking, but I know what he's not thinking. Um, horses I'm even better with. I've been riding since I was 10. I've had my own for 10 years. I am at a point where he shifts his weight. I know where to move my feet to get out of the way. I don't get out of people as much. Um, people, I don't know what to say to them. Do you find do you find making female, female friends more difficult than male friends? I find it difficult making friends in general. Mm. I'm quite good at being acquaintances. I Obviously, I work in a shop and I love my job and I've gotten a lot better at talking to people because my depression's more or less under control now and everything, and it's my job. I'm actually quite good at talking to people. It doesn't scare me anymore. Right. But I still have that little moment before I call someone on the phone. I don't generally like meeting friends of friends because mm. I don't know what to say. I'm not very good at making close personal friends. I'm not quite sure why not. Um, I'm very open. I don't have any secrets, but I don't really know how to progress from being friendly with someone to being friends. From what I've seen, you, you don't, you don't, um, <laughs> you don't cover your words in in the sort of false protective coating that most people use as a social uh, lubricant. If you know what I mean, you, you're just like you just that's this, that's that, that's that. I like it, but a lot of people um, maybe are maybe like oof, oof every time they hear a. Um, I think one of the phrases used to describe me quite a lot at school was, um, well, A, cut her nose off to spite her face, but also, like, um, oh, it's gone. I think uh, this oh, more, this uh, Don't suffer fools lightly. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine that. I can't imagine that. Even this morning, the first words I heard were, um, get up! Like that. Well, was I was on this. I don't know if like you can see, there's a sofa there where this, ca this camera is, is resting on a. A selfie stick. It's professional around here. <laughs> and um, she just sort of stormed down the stairs and was like, get up. But you, I actually liked it. I'll, I'll be honest, I cruel to be kind sometimes. I made you your know, coffee as well. For the first time um, in about two months. But yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> do you think there are fundamental ways women experience emotion differently to men? Yes, definitely. I think um, women have a tendency to, more towards introspection than men do. Um, with men, everything's very externalised. Okay. Could you, that's quite a generalisation, could you unpack? Um, so um, my ex-boyfriend, he had problems that when I broke up with him weren't fully diagnosed, but it was definitely some sort of depression and possibly some sort of personality thing. It was all a bit, as I said, wasn't diagnosed when I left him. And he was very angry he was very like everything was turned outwards the world was wrong i was wrong i was lazy fat unfit you name it um which is so helpful when you're trying to improve <laughs> and yeah the well the actual turning point is when he was nasty to the dog and he was like no <laughs> yeah that's a, that's yeah. a deal breaker with it with any one of any kind of uh but, relationship yeah. you're in but he could be really lovely with the animals. He yeah. just couldn't... I don't know, he just lost it. Like, And yeah. then my dad's quite similar when he's struggling with things. He goes around with, like, like with a bare sort of head. He doesn't, he doesn't talk about his problems or think about how to improve them. <laughs> yeah. He just... He just... Sto stoicism or repression? Repression, definitely. <laughs> Is there Stoic, a difference? Um, stoicism is things are difficult, but I'm going to get through them. And repression is there isn't a problem. I'm not at all sad. I don't feel guilt. And, and that's just lying to yourself. And it doesn't okay. accomplish anything. Um, I agree. Would you describe yourself as a feminist? It depends how you define feminist. Okay. I believe in equal rights, but yep. I also believe in a lot of ways we already have them. Yep. And I don't generally support extremists of any type. I think that extremist feminists 
are bad in the same way that I think extremist vegans are. Tainting, tainting the uh, yeah. principle or the cause. The principle and skewing data to support their own theories yeah. and not considering other people's point of views. Okay. Um, best singer of all time? Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. Um, <laughs> lead singer of Foo Fighters, right? Yes. Formerly drummer and um, yeah. co-songwriter co of... Uh, Many of, others. Of Nirvana. Okay, so my last question for you. Now, two, two more questions. Mm -hmm. How has medication helped you? I have been on three sorts of medication. I was first on citalopram. Yeah. I was on citalopram month, two months. It was given to me yeah. by my doctor in Cardiff when I was there. I was like a zombie on it. I couldn't really function without a nap in the middle of the day. I was still miserable, I was still crying a lot, and it made me like too drowsy to function, and so I eventually went to my doctor and sat there and refused to leave until he gave me something else, because unfortunately a lot of GPs don't really know much about antidepressants, so they don't like changing too often. Yes, um, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of, a lot of misguided experiences with them, GPs. Anyway, sorry, carry on. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily the GP's fault, I don't think, but I would love it if we could get our GPs a bit more specialised so that instead of waiting six weeks like I did to see a mental health nurse and discuss my medication with them, I would very much have liked to be able to go find a doctor nearer to me yeah. who's a bit specialised. I had one in Plymouth who was very good with depression and she was wonderful, she always made time for me. What was so good about her, apart from always making time? I only saw her a few times because I was only there six months, um, but this is a little bit off topic, but um, she was nudging that I should get a smear because I am a woman over the age of 25 and therefore I, therefore I should get them regularly. I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, I was like, I, I can't deal with that, I can't deal with that, I don't want to be looked at like that, I can't deal with people at the best of times. And she was like, well, what if we got you an appointment to just talk to the nurse? Mm. Like, just sit there and meet the nurse and talk to her. And then would you feel better about it? And she was willing to go out of her way to make it easier for me. And I really appreciated that. Okay, that's uh, great. I'm listening very intently, yeah. but I'm also holding on to the dog because I know that if he gets on the sofa, the camera might collapse. But he's laid on the floor now. <laughs> Here's his paw in some hopefully submissive surrender posture. Right, last thing, Claire. Uh, oh, what, if you wanted to, me to finish on medication? Yes, so go ahead. Uh, then I was on metazapine. Metazapine is a sedative. Mm -hmm. It also actually is an appetite stimulant, which wasn't told to me and until I was off it. Um, my last dog was put on it to try and put some weight on him, which explained a lot because I put on about a stone and a half while I was on it. I was on it for two years. It helped, but you must take it at night because it's a sedative and it didn't help that much. Right. I'm currently on sertraline. Same as you, 100 grams, I've been on Mil uh, Milligrams. M milligrams, micrograms, whichever one Not is. 100 grams. No. Not 100 grams, just, um, just so you know. On, on the 100, on the 100. Milligrams. Yeah. Milligrams. Mic micrograms. No, it's milligrams, I checked. Ah. Um, You're thinking yeah. of LSD. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm thinking of um, biology uh, labs. Um, yeah, I like sertraline, it works very well for me. Everything feels quite stable. A bad day is just a bad day, not a whole bad week. Yeah. Um, it was horrible to start on. I spent about a month and a half living on fresh pasta and tins of pineapple and nothing else. Couldn't stomach anything else. Couldn't really stomach to eat. My sleep was disrupted. Right. I felt sick quite a lot. But after that month and a half, everything evened out. And I actually feel quite... I... Balti. Can you uh, just Come hold this car? You actually feel quite... I feel quite stable and centred right now, so... Excellent. Yeah, just for people watching who, who might share the view I used to have, which was that antidepressants were for people who can't cope with um, stress or pain. Um, that was before I had depression, where... <laughs> if you haven't had, like... That's why I asked at the start when you knew it turned from sadness to depression, because if you're waking up every day for months or years... Um, feeling like everyone you know has just died and there's no hope in the world and you're at the bottom of a black swamp and you just want to kill yourself all the time. Um, until you're in that state, don't judge someone who takes who takes medication. 
please. Although there are downsides to medication, no doubt. Right, um, Claire. Well, I would also mention at that point, exercise is not the same. The amount of people I've had who've said, oh, but exercise works, it helps depression. And it may do, but on the days that I'm depressed, I'd rather chew my own ass and leave the house. So I'm not exactly going to manage going to the gym or going for a run then. Well, you could do it. Because if, if you can get up in, in like six months of winter and go and muck out four horses at like 6am in the rain and the... Yeah, but sometimes you look after your friends' horses. If you can do that, you could... Um, mind you, I guess that is quite a good exercise. All right, so we're in lockdown, mm-hmm. May the 14th. Yep. What, what advice would you give to, to people out there who might be feeling very depressed, very, very trapped, very constrained, very frustrated, very uncertain, very anxious... What advice would you give to people going forward? Talk about it. Talking always helps. Um, Talk about what? Anything that's bothering you, everything that's bothering you. I mean, um, as you know, I met up with my mother today. Mm -hmm. My mother hasn't been distancing from me because she worries about me too much, because depression, yay. And I have been distancing from your mother. Yes, and she appreciates it. Um, and we spent a good two hours talking. We sat at the yard and talked while we watched the horses. We took the dog for a walk and talked while we went around there. That helps. Ask for help before you need it. Mm. If you think before it's too late. I'm not doing very well, but I can manage, tell someone you're struggling because when you really need help, when you're at the point that you can barely function, you won't be able to ask for help. It'll be too late. You'll see it you- coming. I mean, anyone who knows you will be worried anyway. My mum was the entire time I was at uni, but that's not really... It's not as good as saying to someone, I'm struggling, can you help me? Anticipate. Yeah, my advice to people... Thank you for that. My advice to people be with the whole lockdown thing is, um, like, on on Passover, some observing Jewish people sing that little song about... It's always the same little song about not waiting for the bread to rise and acting preemptively. So, uh, I'm not ashamed to say whenever I've been going, hear, hearing the news about the supply chains and, people, and manufacturing places closing down, each time I've been going shopping, I've been getting a few extra cans and things like that. It could be crazy, it could be Fallout Boy syndrome, if Fallout Boy wasn't your favourite band, but the actual Fallout, meaning Fallout. <laughs> um, no, but you're just I would advise. We both know you're just a doomsday prepper, don't worry about it. I do have a mental health YouTube channel, so. That's, that's probably the main thing. Anyway, Claire, thank you very, very much. Guys, tell us what you think. Unfortunately, I have to get up to press this because uh, this is a delicate operation. Let us know what you think in the, in the comments. Um, share us your stories about depression, about uh, coping tips and lockdown, about anxiety, and all the rest of it. Medication. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.